Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. So today I'm going to work on battling the same check engine light that I've been battling for a few months now. Um, my kind of project Saab 9.5. Um, so my plan for that today is I'm gonna replace the blow off valve. Even the last time I, I found that vacuum line had popped off, I think that I suspect it might be a long shot that there might be a leak on the diaphragm on the blow off valve, which is causing it to overpressurize the vacuum line and pop off the vacuum line. Maybe it's probably a long shot, but that's what I'm gonna try and do. I'm just gonna replace it since I bought the new one anyways. And then someone, one of you guys recommended replacing the vacuum line. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. And then what I wanna do is take out my HVAC module and I'm gonna send it off to get repaired because the LCD is out on it and Right now I still have the driver's side which is stuck on cold, which I think is just a blender door. But the module actually has a self-check feature that does like a diagnostic on it to tell you what's wrong. But I can't see the screen, so I'm gonna have the screen repaired and then I'll do run that test to make sure I don't buy anything I don't need. Um, and that should be it for mechanical stuff for this car. Um, I mean, over time I might do some more preventative stuff like a uh, serpentine belt and I might end up doing some more suspension bushings after a while because they're definitely on their way out. They're not completely gone, but sometimes in tight maneuvers in parking lots, it does make a few creaks, um, sometimes bangs. So we'll probably need doing, but I'll do those slowly over time. I just want to get the AC working or be able to control the temperature and see the screen. And then I'm going to start working on cosmetics of this car, polishing the paint and wheels and then restoring everything. And then hopefully, eventually, a car will be good as new. But all right, so for today, I'm gonna tackle that blow off valve and then the, get the HVC unit out so I can send that off. Stay tuned. zip tying the new vacuum line on, I actually found another vacuum connection here that was, um, it was like old and rotted and when I went to touch the line it just snapped, which I think connects down here to this T. So I'm gonna use the leftover vacuum line I had and replace that. I'm not sure what that goes to, it looks like. Something on the intake manifold. So 
Um, gonna just replace that with some nice extra vacuum line I have. So I probably didn't need to change the blow off valve because I think it was probably fine. It was just the vacuum leak. But anyways, hopefully that will correct the issue. So yeah, I probably should have just listened to the internet and replaced those vacuum lines only and been fine. And it was probably the issue. I didn't even need the new blow off valve, but oh well, since I got it, uh, hopefully that will correct the issue. And next I'm gonna try and get the HVAC unit out. So I bought this like radio rem radio removal kit on Amazon. Uh, I've never <laughs> done this before, so uh, we'll see how it goes, but probably just break a bunch of shit and hopefully it comes out. Hopefully I don't break too much stuff, but be careful and hopefully I'll get it out and then I can set it off to your repair. So as you guys can see, getting that uh, HVAC unit out was pretty easy. Um, all you had to do was use that tool to pull the radio out, and then you could kind of just set the radio aside and then undo the clip on the back of the HVAC unit and push the HVAC unit out. Um, so I'm gonna send that off. Um, but the reason I'm reshooting this uh, in my office is because I, I, I forgot to explain that there's uh, what the options are for correcting the HVAC unit. Um, so mine, the screen's not working, so the pixels are dead. So there's basically three ways that I've found on the internet that you can go about correcting that. I think I'm doing the easiest, but, um, or the best, I'm doing the best compromise of ease and price. So the reason that the screen goes out is because there's a, a, basically just a solder strip, uh, rable, a cable, ri cable ribbon uh, solder that like over time, the hot and the cold just makes it lose connection. Um, so you can get a new strip and solder it on, but that was going to take like a month to order the strip from China, which was the only reasonable priced one. Um, and then you have to be good at soldering, which I'm not. So you also can buy a refurbished whole unit for like $150 or one that comes out of a car from a junkyard or something for like $150. Or there's this company in Wisconsin that you can send it to and they'll do it for $50. They'll um, re-solder the ribbon cable for you and they also do like a test of the thing to make sure it's working properly. Um, so that's the method I'm going for. Um, I think it's the best compromise. So they said it's like a five day turnaround once you send it to them. Uh, so I'll put that new module in when I get it back, put the radio back in. Um, and I'm gonna start working on the exterior of the car, uh, getting that looking good and then Probably just some minor stuff I'll keep working on over time as it starts to bother me more, but otherwise the car will be pretty much drivable then. So I hope you guys like this episode. Um, I know it probably wasn't too overly exciting. I didn't actually really need to replace that blow-off valve, I don't think. I think it was just a vacuum leak um, that was causing that code. But I drove the car and it hasn't come back on yet, so that's good. Um, but yeah, if you guys like these videos, then make sure you like and subscribe and I'll be sure to be posting a new one soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.